It's been over one year since I quit my first full-time job after college, and honestly, it's probably been the best decision that I've ever made. Now, college and sometimes even high school isn't for everyone, and that's why today's video is about the top 10 highest paying jobs you can do without a college degree or even a high school diploma. Now, the best part is I'll be breaking them down into two categories. The first will be the top five jobs you can do if you wanna be self-employed, and that means you'll be able to earn a comfortable living working from home or traveling around the world while being your own boss. It's truly all up to how you want your lifestyle to be. Now, I also know that working for yourself isn't for everyone, and that's totally fine, but that's also why I've dedicated the other five jobs to people who actually enjoy working a nine to five or just want to have a more uh, scheduled lifestyle. Regardless of the path that you choose, though, these top 10 jobs are definitely something you should consider if you plan on not pursuing college or even high school. Now, if you're still watching, I would think it's safe to say you're either reconsidering staying in school or debating on even going. And I was once in your shoes too, believe it or not. Coming from a household where both my parents were teachers, school education was actually really, really, really important. Like it was the number one thing. And I was told countless times that in order for me to make money and get a good job, I had to graduate college and I had to get good grades. Otherwise I'd be failing them as well as the rest of my family. Not seeing any other options, I took their advice and I went to school. And somehow I managed to graduate with an undergrad in marketing, but I can't tell you how many run-ins I've had from seriously wanting to drop out and almost failing out. I was more focused on starting my own business and making money than my schoolwork, and my grades reflected that. Now, it's currently been two years since I graduated college, and let me be clear, I have not used my degree at all. All. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but I really don't have any use for it. The pandemic, you know, of 2020 hit the year that I graduated, and somehow I was still able to land a full time job as a marketing manager. But a short while after, I think about a year of working there, I decided to quit to pursue my dream of, you know, being self employed. Now, despite quitting my job, I was able to build my own business, my own LLC in college, and manage to save and invest my way to a net worth of around $600,000 at only. 24 years old. That's right. I'm only 24. And when I started the business, I think I was 20. I believe I was a sophomore in college at 20 years old when I first started working on my business. And for reference, this is my Fidelity account during what we're currently in a recession. And I have a little over 300,000 in there. Granted, my portfolio is down 27%, which is terrible, but that's, uh, you know, for a whole other video. I'd like to think that I'm currently on the right track. Since I've proved it's possible, that means you guys can too. So here are the top 10 highest paying jobs that don't require a college degree or a high school diploma. Fortunately, going these alternative routes allows you to avoid uh, the student loan trap that every single person and all of my friends are falling for. Over 40 million Americans currently share $1.75 trillion in student loan debt. And this year, the average student loan debt for federal loans is over $37,000. The scary part is it usually takes 20 years for the average graduate to pay off their loans. What's worse is some PhDs and master's degrees take over 45 years to pay off all the student loans that you accumulate uh, while in school. I even did a quick Google search and found out that medical school graduate salaries are no longer enough to make their student loan payments. Times are changing right now. And honestly, not going to school is totally okay in 2022. And you're probably even better off without getting a degree and going to school if you're considering going into a major that's oversaturated like communications or liberal arts that you're going to spend $100,000 on. Like, please don't do that. Seriously think about like alternatives, like the ones I'm going to say, uh, instead of taking on that debt and really, you know, locking yourself in for paying off debt over the next 20 years. Now, if you're like me and you want to be self-employed, expect your business at first to take a few years to get off the ground. That's usually how it is. You might even have to work a few part-time jobs while trying to scale your business. That's also what I did. Now, to get right into it, the first job in no particular order is a sponsorship broker. And this is a fairly new career that's developed from the growth of social media and influencers. The best part about becoming like a sponsorship broker is the ability to start this business yourself or work for a company. It's up to you what you choose. So typically sponsoring social media influencers is like this like untapped market that hasn't been oversaturated yet. And I can tell you firsthand that there is a lot of money being spent within the niche of influencing and social media influencing. In 2021 alone, approximately $3.7 billion were projected to be spent on influencer marketing in the United States. And I also can vouch that there is a lot of money to be made because as a YouTuber myself, I do business with a lot of them and I 
see how much money they make off my sponsorship deals with other brands. Now, sponsorship brokers are typically like the people within a niche that bring advertisements to influencers. They basically middleman the transactions and keep a piece of the advertisement budget and usually have on retainer influencers and brands and then form the relationship between the two of them. Now, you can also think of them as the new generation of recruiters. So instead of connecting like employees to employers, now you have a sponsorship broker who's connecting advertisers to audiences. Second, we have social media influencers. Instead of brokering a deal to an influencer, you actually are the influencer. And it still sounds weird to say it, but you know, being an influencer is actually a career nowadays. Times are definitely changing where big brands no longer just advertise on TV and radio stations. They're choosing to pay influencers and content creators because they know they can specifically target a niche audience. TV has become the old way to advertise. Now it's specifically social media. Even social media platforms are beginning to pay people. Things like TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and now even Instagram will pay you quite a bit of money just to create content. Like you don't even have to be an influencer. As long as you have a few videos go viral, you can make quite a bit of money. I've been making TikTok solely for fun and TikTok has paid me over $800 in just a few months of creating viral content. And I'm not even like a celebrity or an influencer. Now, TikTok is also known to pay the worst. So if you check out some of these other YouTubers and see how much money they've made last year alone only off AdSense, which is YouTube revenue, then it's pretty incredible. And I'm not even including sponsorships that they get, affiliate links, or even their own businesses that they start. It's just, you know, the surface of what you can make. What these influencers do is they create an audience and that's key to growing a business pretty quickly. Like no matter how taboo your audience is or whatever niche you're in, you can actually create a business from it. Once you've obtained a fairly large size audience, you can then start selling merchandise, coffee, car parts, 3D printers, reptiles. I mean, honestly, the ideas are endless. Third, we have video editors. Now, since social media is the next big thing, content creators and influencers need people to edit their videos. Whether it's TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram Reels, it doesn't matter. Video editors are becoming highly profitable and are becoming an in-demand business, especially if you're talented. Now, you see some content creators are just horrible at editing and others eventually get too big or just don't have the time to create content as well as edit their videos. So at some point, hiring a video editor comes across every influencer's mind and even content creator's mind. And the best part is because it's a difficult talent to learn, the pay is really good. Skilled and experienced YouTube editors can actually earn between 50 to $100 per hour for professional video editing. That's between 100K and 200K a year. And if you're just starting out, you can easily charge 20 to 30 bucks an hour. Fourth, we have freelance writers. Now this goes hand in hand with jobs I've mentioned earlier in this whole social media phase that's becoming really popular. But at some point, content creators get too big, like we said before, and they need to hire help. And after they outsource their video editing, the next person they usually hire is their freelance writer to make their video scripts. Now, believe it or not, 95% of the words that I'm currently saying is scripted. Every single word that you're currently hearing has been thoroughly thought of before recording this video. Now, I've also done business with freelance writers too, and I know that they usually charge around $60 an hour. And I've even seen script writing specifically for making YouTube videos uh, charge six cents a word. Now, a typical YouTube script like the video you're watching is close to 2,000 words. They're able to charge around $1,200 each script they write, and it's really a great business to get into. Fifth, we have personal training. Now, this is a great career to get involved in because of how big you can scale it. Gone are the times where you need to actually train somebody one one on one physically in person. Now that we have the internet, being able to manage clients online and all around the world will no longer limit your potential. Now I have friends of mine that have actually dropped out of college and are making six figure incomes doing online coaching. One comes to mind and when he first started personal training, he reached a cap of how much money he could make because he trained in person and obviously there are so many hours in the day. Now once he went online, which was partially due to the pandemic, he was actually able to double his income within a year. So the pandemic was actually a positive for his business. The cool thing is too, is once you have a credible name, you can easily charge $1,000 to $2,000 per client for six months. And this is why personal training is also my number six choice, because not only can you do this all as a self-employed person, you can also work for other people. Most club gyms offer in-house personal trainers and they usually require some sort of license, but you don't need a high school diploma to get it. Specifically, what comes to mind are LA fitness personal trainers, which are making about $30 an hour. And and then 
Lifetime, which is an even more resort exclusive gym, their personal trainers can easily make $60,000 a year. And a job like this requires you to really just look the part. So if you do, then there's a lot of money that can be made. Seventh is anything within sales. If you're good at selling things, you can make a lot of money. Most sales jobs work on commission with a base salary. This is usually within, you know, selling insurance, selling real estate, selling cars. This is to incentivize you to sell whatever product or service that your job is currently pushing. And it's also seen a lot, like I said, within car dealerships. The best part is you don't need a diploma or a degree to, to sell cars. The only thing is when you first start off, you'll start at the bottom of the totem pole. But if you're actually talented, you can quickly move up positions. So you might first start off at a Honda dealership, and then you might end up at a Lamborghini dealership within just a couple of years. So clearly the commissions are higher for bigger ticket sales, and the average car salesman makes about $60,000 a year, but a good one can easily make over 100K a year. Eighth, we have truck drivers and construction workers. In order to drive a truck or heavy machinery, you need something called a CDL. Some states a diploma is necessary and others it isn't. So you have to do your homework and figure out which state you live in and what the requirements are. Typically, a truck driver's compensation is highly variable due to multiple factors, specifically the more experience, difficult loads, maintaining a, a clean driving record, willingness to endure risk, and traveling to remote locations are just some of the traits for drivers who actually earn a higher than average salary. And typically truck drivers can easily earn well over 60k a year, depending on how skilled they are. Ninth, we have real estate agents. And in order for you to become a real estate agent, you need your real estate license, which is usually about $350 to $700. Now, this is another job that may or may not require a high school diploma depending on your state so make sure to go check it out but if you can't tell this is also another sales job similar to a car salesman the only difference is instead of earning a three percent commission on selling a forty thousand dollar honda civic you can actually earn three percent on a half million dollar penthouse so there's a big commission incentive there and typically the research i found says a full-time real estate agent can easily earn over six figures depending on how talented you are in sales now lastly the tenth job is a career in the food industry specifically waitering, waitressing, bartending, or managing a restaurant. The reason this is in my top 10 is because of how much money you can make on tips. Believe it or not, I used to bartend, and honestly, after seeing how much money you can make in tips from just the night is incredible. It's, it's mind-blowing if you've never worked in the tip industry. It's at the point where I would never, if I had to, I would never go back to a job that didn't offer tips. And similar to a sales job, the more experience you have making drinks, which you might actually need some sort of mixology license, but I've had bartending job where they don't require it and they don't ask for it, but I'm sure there's a little more to that. But really, it just boils down to experience. The more experience you have making drinks and running food and speaking with people, the further you can go within this career. Now, it takes work, obviously, and hard work and making connections. That's really the big thing. But if you can actually land yourself a gig working in a high-end restaurant, you can easily earn yourself $80,000 to $150,000 a year with tips. So guys, that's it for today's video. If you've stayed this long, I do appreciate you watching. And if you've had any experience in these fields I mentioned today, then tell me about it down in the comments. Otherwise, happy Monday, and I'll see you next week. Peace.